Okay, so we're gonna start this very exciting webinar. Welcome everyone who's here. Thanks a lot for, for joining us. It's awesome to, to have you here. Um, the very exciting webinar we have for you guys today is about how to set your trading goals for 2017. Uh, great way to start the year. Um, we have with us uh, Dale Pinker. Hey man, how are you? How's everything I'm going? Great, Camillo. I want to thank everyone for showing up here today. I, it's an honor that you would prefer to hear this webinar rather than watch uh, the 45th President of the United States being inaugurated <laughs> today. So um, yeah. maybe uh, Donald Trump will make me Fed Chairman uh, when Janet Yellen retires. So uh, great to have everyone here. What I'm going to talk about today, uh, unlike what I do with videos talking about markets and trades, uh, this is about goal setting, but you can't achieve your goals without having the right psychology. So you could have all kinds of technical uh, prowess, but if your mindset is off and dysfunctional, your results will end up being the same as well. So I want this to be interactive. Uh, well, the attendees, please, please give me a why if you could hear me clearly. All you have to do is type in the chat box. I'm looking for it. Looking for the chat box. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, I'm uh, having trouble finding the, can someone please type me a message so I can make sure that I see everyone in here. I'm trying to get the chat box going here. Uh, Dale, try clicking uh, on the blue uh, icon on uh, on your taskbar at the bottom right. I, uh, I think you'll find it there. For questions, click open question pane. Send to all. Okay, I see everyone. Okay, so here's your disclaimer. Everyone had a chance to read it. This is for educational purposes only. Give me a why if you could see it. I'm still looking for the chat box. I had it up here before, and I don't know where it went. Try clicking on the webinar icon on the bottom right of, of, your, of your taskbar. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Nothing? I have all the attendees here, but I'm not seeing the chat box. I don't know what I did to do in view. I want to view the chat. There it is. Can someone? Okay, got it. Hey, everyone. Okay. Hello. Okay, let's get started. There's your disclaimer. Remember that um, you should not trade anything but risk capital. And uh, this is for education, but if you turn into a trader, do not trade your rent money, your mortgage money, uh, anything that you and your family need to be able to live on. It's got to be risk capital. In fact, um, I was draconian when I was a commodity broker, and when people were ready to open an account with 20 grand or so, I would say to them, I want you to imagine striking a match and lighting up that check, and if that makes you nervous, it's not risk capital. Give me a while if you guys understand that. Because it's key. It's called suitability. Can you guys just type a Y in there for me? So I know you understand it and acknowledge it. Great. Okay. So let's get to our first slide. 
people make New Year's resolutions every year, and 99% of them break them. As traders, analysts, we have to make resolutions every day. And one of the best ways to make a resolution every day is to write it down and stare at it and keep reminding yourself so that your subconscious finally accepts the paradigm and you have created a new paradigm for yourself. So uh, to have a, a healthy paradigm, the first thing that we need to do is to have realistic expectations. Okay? Let me ask you guys a question here. What are your expectations when you trade? What type of returns are you looking for off of your account? Can I get some answers here? And we're talking about not buying the hype. Anyone just throw a number out there. How many are looking to double their account in a year? Give me a why. Have it right here in this box. Okay. So you're looking to double it every year? All right. How many are 50% a year? All right. Throw out some more numbers. More realistic, John. Two to three percent. Even more realistic, Juan. Does anyone know what number hedge fund managers do cartwheels? Okay. Raphael, good, good luck with that. 10%, oh, that, you know, that's beating the S&P, 12%. I'd say 25%, and they're going to be doing cartwheels. And these are guys that manage billions of dollars. Okay, so, uh, you know, if you only have $5,000 and you want to be rich, of course, you're going to try and hit home run balls. And you read the hype on the Internet about uh, people doubling their account. Even Raphael is conservative compared to what a lot of things you read on the net. How many people have read on the net about being able to trade for a living with five to ten thousand dollars in their account? Give me a why if you have. Okay. Well, it's not true. Unless you want to live under an underpass, beneath an underpass. You know, I'm here in California, and uh, uh, if I was only trading with 10k. I wouldn't be able to afford to have a roof over my family's head and put food on the table with the way I trade. So keep your other job, okay? And I think that if you're doing 25 to 50 percent on your money in a year, you're a champion. Give me a why if you agree with me. In fact, I would say that 90 percent of the traders out there would just like to be even. Who's trying to get even? Give me a why. Anyone out there still trying to break even? Okay, so you'd be happy with being up 10%, right? I think that you need a minimum of at least 5 to 10, and with that, uh, I would only be trading micro lots, minis at the most. Does that help, Juan? And I'm going to talk a little bit about that, too. People do not take demo accounts seriously. Uh, I recommend that people, even if you're a millionaire, start trading micro lots. The reason I say micro lots is it's at least you have the experience of having money on the line, the emotions of having money on the line. Whereas a demo, you don't. You don't take it seriously. Even if you're losing ten, twenty dollars or making ten or twenty dollars, you're at least experiencing the emotions of uh, capital going your way and flowing away from you. Give me a why if you agree with that and take that to heart. Okay, so micro lots are a very good place for people to start to trade. Okay, because it has the combination of it's not life or death, and it never should be anyway. Every trade is just another trade. If you make a trade too important, then uh, the outcome usually isn't great. It should just be another trade. You shouldn't get elated on winning trades, and you shouldn't get deflated on losing trades. So that brings me to the next part of it, and it would be monetary goals. 
and I knew a lot of successful traders that had a monetary goal. If they made 500, they go into the pit, they made 500 a day, that would be it. Okay, they reached their goal. Uh, I never tried that, okay, because actually I don't like to even trade money in the markets. I look at the, each trade as what's the potential of the trade and what's the risk on the trade and instead of, well, I'm looking to make 5% on my account or I'm only willing to risk 1% per trade. To me, a stop loss is not based upon a percentage of your account. It's uh, based upon where you would want to abandon the trade, where the contingency that compelled you to take risk takes you out, out of a trade. How many in here have monetary goals? Uh, I've seen it work successfully. You may want to try it. Some people say 20 pips a day, 50 pips a day, but at least you have something to find. You have something to find by having a monetary goal. That's right. I, I agree with that. So you have a monetary goal of a certain amount of pips a week. You meet it. And if you meet it, what do you do, Richard, after you meet your goal? You press it. Okay, that's right. You just stop. And then you turn the page. And you have a new week to accomplish that goal, or a new day to accomplish that goal, or a new month to accomplish that goal. But once you've reached that goal, and it's a very personal decision, 2 to 3% a month, someone mentioned here earlier, I think that's a very realistic approach. You could do that without being over leveraged. What I also want to stress is people that are shooting for triple digit returns and better, they have a tendency to over leverage and try and hit home run balls in the market. That this is going to be the one trade that they're going to ride the euro for 1200 pips and they're going to be fully margined up and all of a sudden they're going to be set and they're finally going to have a lot of trading capital to work with where they don't have to press. The only problem is with a home run ball hitter and any people in here from the U.S., from America, I know in South America it's a popular sport. I don't think it is in Australia or New Zealand. But the sport of baseball, if you look at the best home run hitters uh, that have set records, they're also the biggest strikeout kings. So they strike out. They just go back to the dugout until their next at bat. If we strike out, we run out of ammunition to trade. So resolve that you are not going to try and hit a home run ball this year. Can I get some agreement on that? That you're not going to swing for the fences on any one trade, that you're going to be satisfied hitting singles and doubles to carry out the baseball metaphor metaphor a little further. John's agreed. Do I get some agreement? I also want you to write it down. I want you to write it down. I will not try and double my account, triple my account on one trade. I will not swing for the fences. And you have to write down these things because if you don't see them every day, you're going you're gonna to forget. And some type of psychology or emotion is going to take over your rational mind. So it's about controlling our emotions, self-control, as Richard's saying. So we're agreed, no home run balls in 2017. If it turns into one, that's great. I will not swing for the fences. Beautiful, Julian. Okay, so really the key is having realistic expectations. If you come in and you think with 10 grand you're going to become a millionaire, the chances are 90% or better that you're going to go broke. But if you come in with 10,000 and go, you know, I'd really be satisfied turning this 10,000 into 14 or 15,000 in 12 months, 
and then the year after that I'll have 15,000 that maybe I could turn into 22,000 the next year and the compounding effect of adding to your base. If you're satisfied with that, you have a much better, higher chance of success. Okay. Okay, John. That's it. You want to turn 10 into 15. It's realistic. Okay. So people trying to turn 10 into 100, they're going to go to the trader's graveyard, most of them. I've seen it. I've done it myself. There's nothing that I'm teaching you that I haven't experienced myself. I experienced most everything a trader could go through in my 30 year plus career. I've seen a lot of cycles. <clears throat> so is everyone satisfied with our first slide? Don't buy the hype. Hedge fund managers are happy with 25% on equity and you're going to try and have monetary goals and when you hit them you stop trading, walk away until your next time period for accomplishing the same thing happens. Do I have an agreement from all 11 of you here in the room? Before we go to the next slide. Okay. Here's the next one. Less is more. Have you ever heard that? Less is more unless you're a broker. I resolve not to make my broker rich. Can anyone say that? I resolve not to make my broker rich by over trading. Less is more. So how do we accomplish the less? Anyone ever find themselves trading too much? And they would have been better off trading less. Plus uh, spreads and commissions and everything else also add up. So here's one way to trade less. Only take trades. Okay, that's fine. Only take trades that you plan in advance. You could still be a scalper and plan your trades, can't you? Only take trades that you plan in advance. So even if you're a scalper, Raphael, I guarantee you come in with technical areas that you're looking to buy and sell against. What I'm trying to get across to people is not to do any impulse trading. Impulse trading to me is, well, I come in, I don't have any ideas, I start scanning my charts, I see something, and I react to it. And I'm not saying that never works out, but there are lower probability outcomes because you didn't plan it, you didn't think about it, you didn't do the work to look for confluence, for uh, reasons to get in. It's more impulsive. Anyone in here ever trade impulsively? They just turn on their platform and go, huh, I think I'll try that trade. Give me a why if you've done that. Here's mine. I have to I, I still have to fight that impulse. Okay, I still have to fight that in, impulse. Okay, well then this is what I want you to do. I want you to write this down. I will only take trades planned in advance. That means you have to do your homework before you're ready to trade. You're prepared before you're ready to trade. How have those impulse trades worked out for you, John? How about for you, Minaj? Richard's not doing it anymore. Richard, how did you overcome impulse trading? You want to share that with the community? <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, so you that's not a bad... <laughs> that's not a bad uh, percentage. If you're right, a 60% hit right is pretty good for impulse trading. It's usually a lot worse because uh, there's not a lot of thought and effort that goes into uh, preparing for a trade. 
Okay, everyone, thanks for sharing. And this is a tough one. Learn it's okay to do nothing. Who's uncomfortable doing nothing? I am. Anyone else? The need to be in a trade? Who's uncomfortable being flat? Give me a why. Okay. And you know why you are? FOMO. Because you're afraid you're going to miss something. Who agrees that, okay, well, you're a pro then. A lot of people have an issue with that. That's great. You know, we're paid to wait. Sometimes the right trade is no trade. Okay, well, you're going to have to get over that. It's okay to do nothing. Uh, for me, I'm happy with two or three good setups a week. You know, and I run a room, and, you know, people want setups every day. And my stuff, unless I just go to a 15-minute chart, does not provide that, and they're not as high quality, uh, high probability trades when I feel pressed to have to trade. So uh, play the Tom Petty song, the waiting is the hardest part. Okay, but you have to learn to wait. When, when people are hunting, they're not always firing their gun, are they? A lot of hunting is waiting. And we're hunting in the markets looking for opportunities and a good hunter has to at times be still and stalk before they strike. Um, you guys from Australia, great surfers don't try and catch every wave, do they? Your great surfers also in the lineup wait for a good setup. They don't try and catch every wave. So. Reduce your trading activity. Stop making your broker rich. Only take trades that are pre-planned and that you have at least one or two reasons to do. Maybe it's a, a stochastic crossing. Maybe it's a FIB retracement, whatever. But have more than one reason and you won't be doing impulsive trading. And learn to be okay with doing nothing. That too, also very important. So why don't we resolve to be okay doing nothing? Because we're, we're not afraid of missing out on a trade and accept that we're always gonna miss trades and that it's okay to miss trades because there is always another. Can I get an amen on that? We, it's okay to miss trades we will always miss trades. It's okay because there's always another bus, train, airplane, always another trade around the corner. Okay. Anyone learning anything new here? Or at least taking a look in the mirror? with their own psychology so far. Okay, and I know Camillo is, okay, I know Camillo's recording this. This is gonna be a very good, this is gonna be a very good teaching tool for you to play over and over again. Um, I follow a guy, you know, I believe in the human potential movement. And, you know, a lot of people are familiar with the secret. I follow a guy or watch videos of a guy named Robert Proctor. Anyone ever heard of him? Robert Proctor. And he talks about the subconscious mind. Okay, Richard. He talks about our subconscious mind and that we have to repeat things over and over again to create a new paradigm. Pictures are good. Having a visual goal is good. Um, who wants to buy a new house or a new car this year? Anyone in here? Or take a great vacation. Okay. 
get a picture of that car and stare at it every day next to your monitor. Put that car, that picture of that car up by your monitor. Along with I will not try and hit swing for the fences to buy a car. Okay, but have that image in front of you. If you guys want to learn about that, plenty of videos on YouTube by Robert Proctor. Okay. The next slide. Use less leverage. Why doesn't everyone tell me what kind of leverage they use when if they trade? When and if you trade? What kind of leverage? Forty to one, ten to one. No leverage. I know guys that use no leverage. Okay, Raphael uses a hundred to one, which in my opinion is excessive. Richard uses a hundred to one. Fifty's better. All right. The guys using a hundred to one. That's more realistic, Minoj. You're not going to get blown out of the water. So let me ask everyone who's using 100 to 1 leverage, what's your average stop loss on that trade? What's your average stop loss per trade with that kind of leverage? No answers? Then let me ask you this question. Do you experience being 50 to 100? Okay. Do you experience being right to market, wrong to trade? You know why I it happens to me where you get knocked out of a trade where your stop gets picked off and then the market moves in the direction you were anticipating? Give me a why if that happens to you a lot. A lot. Not just, it happens to everyone occasionally. But if it happens to you a lot, it's because you're using too much leverage and your stops are too tight. And you're not letting your trades breathe. So Raphael, 50 to 100 pips. Richard, 20 to 30. Uh, maybe if you're a day trader. But if you're uh, looking for a swing trade, doesn't it make sense that you should risk at least an average trading range for the day? I'm not talking about scalping day trading. I'm talking swing position trading. Because if you can't be wrong for a day, how can you be right for a week? If you can't be wrong for a day, how can you be right for a week? So I would reduce leverage and have wider stops and let your trades breathe, and you're going to find that you're not going to be right to market, wrong to trade as often. Give me a why if you're going to try that. No one wants to try that? Okay. So there's a resolution. Use less leverage. Have wider stops. And you're not going to be picked off, stopped out, and then have the market work for you. Okay, the next thing that is a suggestion, um, how many people are all in, all out? on their trades. They have one entry and they have one exit. Give me a why if you trade like that. Okay. 
Now I have an expression, don't expect perfection at the craps table. So I'm a big believer in piecing into a position and piecing out. And more important to piece out than to piece in. Because there are times that I will hit a trade right on the, right on the button, very little drawdown, and it's going to go right to target. But that's the exception. That's not the rule. Maybe that happens 5-10% of the time, not 90% of the time. So you may want to consider having a toe in the water when you enter and when you have a trade moving in your favor to take half off to piece out so you get paid. How many people have had let winning trades turn into break-evens or losers when they've been up 20, 30 pips? on a trade. Give me a why. How many people have let winning trades turn into losing trades or even break even trades? Give me a why. Everyone has. Come on, everyone has. All right, well here's another resolution. I resolve to take partial profits when I'm up 20 or 30 pips on every trade and then move my stop to break even. I resolve to take partial profits on every trade when I'm up 20 or 30 pips and then move my stop to break even. Anyone in here want to resolve that? I'm telling you it's going to help your results because then you get paid on the trade, you've taken all the risk out of the trade, and if it keeps going, you're still there, maybe only half as much, but you're still there, and if it comes back to pick off your entry you, and you still believe in the trade, you could recommit, but you're recommitting with profits rather than principal. Who resolves to take partial profits every time a trade is up, especially if you're a short-term trader and a big hit for you is 80, 100 pips? you got to take 20 or 30 because it may not get there, and at least you get paid. Anyone in here like that resolution? I resolve to take partial profits 20 to 30 pips on a trade in my favor, and move my stop to BE. You may want to leave the stop where it is and may go back to your entry, you know. Uh, you may want to just leave the stop. That's up to you. My personal decision is to go to BE. Okay? So John goes along with that. So the last one was, if you can't be wrong for a day, if you're a position trader, how can you be right for a week? That's the average trading range that I was talking about. You know, if the euro has a 70 pip average trading range um, and I'm position trading, I have to allow myself to be wrong for a day. Okay, I have to at least risk what a market can do against me for at least a day to be there for a position. So here's another resolution. I resolve when I position trade to assume the risk of an average trading range of that instrument. I resolve when I take a position for a swing or position trade that I am willing to risk one day's average trading range. Anyone like that resolution? Try it. Try it on your micro account if you're with microbes and see if it works for you. No one likes that. Hey, Dale. Uh, yes. The audio got a little choppy when, when you were saying that uh, resolution. Can, can you repeat it? Oh, sure. Okay. I, I resolve when I'm position or swing trading to risk 
the average trading range on that instrument. Okay, so if it's 80 pips in euro and I'm swing or position trading, I have to be willing to risk at least an average trading range so I can be wrong for a day and still be right for a week or three days or a month. I resolve to risk a daily ATR. That's that resolution. If you heard it, give me a why. You don't have to agree to it, but give me a why that you heard it. Okay. And this is a very, very important one, and you guys are already halfway there. All right? Um, anyone watch my daily videos? Uh, my twice a week videos. I believe they're on your Facebook page. Are they helpful to you? I was hot for a while. I caught some the dollar top and the end top, and I'm not always right. But anyway, this is the last slide, and it's important. Find a mentor and a supportive trading community. Okay, Juan, you know that's exactly what I'm going to do next week. That's what I told Martin and Camillo, that maybe I'm trying to cover too many pairs. So you just gave me a confirmation of that. Thank you, Juan. So you guys have already found a supportive trading community. Congratulations. Okay. Um, one thing I want to say and I, I, I want you guys to realize that you don't rush. You can't learn experience. Okay? So there are going to be more experienced people in your community than you. It only happens with the passing of time. You can't learn experience. It happens with the passing of time and living through things. And in this profession, it's screen time. But you can't learn experience. But you could speed up your learning curve by reaching out. And I've noticed this from traders. A lot of traders enjoy helping people. They recall the struggle or the struggles and the failures that they've been through and the landmines that they've stepped on and they want to help others avoid the pain that they went through themselves. So I want everyone in here to resolve to not be bashful to ask for help from a more experienced trader in their community. I resolve to let go of my ego that I don't know it all and I've been doing this for over three decades and I'm still learning from other people. I resolve not to be afraid to ask for help in my community. I resolve not to be afraid because a lot of people are afraid to ask for help because they think, oh, they'll think I'm stupid. That's right, the squeaky wheel, Richard. And you'll be how many people have reached out in the Forex boat community and have had people reach back to them? Give me a why. Because I've run social trading communities and I've witnessed it. It's not a theory. If you reach out, a lot of people are very willing to reach back. Has anyone experienced that? Could it be because you haven't reached out? Okay. Now, not every community is a great community. A lot of it has to do with the decorum and the rules within the community. You'll go into many chat rooms where people 
have to think that they're the trading messiah. No one knows more than them. Anyone else that doesn't follow them or fades them is stupid. And other people's ideas are only good so you could take the other side. There are communities where people actually root for others to lose so that their losses are rationalized and their own inadequacies are rationalized. So avoid egocentric communities because you're going to get caught up in it. There's enough emotions. Um, I have one rule that we all root for each other. We all celebrate others' victories. We never root for others to fail. And if you go in with that attitude in your community, you're going to foster that. Has anyone ever experienced the other? You're very welcome, Richard. I'm close to wrapping it anyway. Okay. So the, I resolve to only be supportive to my fellow traders. I resolve to be supportive to my fellow traders. Give me a why if you can resolve that. To the best of my ability, I resolve to be supportive to other people. And here's how you could do it. I recovered, reach out to experienced people in your community. I'd say that Richard Hewitt is pretty experienced. I'd, I'd uh, reach out to him. Okay. And here's the last one. Don't fear sharing your ideas, your charts with screenshots. It will make you a better trader. So some of the best traders I know show their ideas because it's human nature to only show your best, right? We try and put on a good face. Uh, we try, we dress and we look presentable. Uh, we're only trying to show the world our best. So if you start sharing your ideas, you'll learn if someone agrees with it and shows you something else that you may not have seen you're going to learn if someone agrees with it and has you consider that maybe you should um, be looking at something else. So don't fear sharing ideas, even if you're fairly new to this industry. Don't fear sharing your ideas. Most people, um, just like public speaking, they're afraid to share their ideas because then they're afraid they'll be blamed if it doesn't work out. So if you're in the right kind of supportive community, you don't have to be afraid about putting up a chart that you thought something was going to go up and it went down. You shouldn't have that fear. If you, if you do, you're in the wrong community. You need to find another experience, in my extremely accurate and humble opinion. So the last resolution is I will not be shy about showing my work. I resolve not to be shy about sharing my work and ideas. Are people willing to make that resolution? Have I given you guys some good resolutions to consider in 2017? Okay, why is it difficult, John? Why is it difficult? What's the fear? Because you're introverted. Well, then it'll be good. It'll be a stretch for you. And you, you know what? You may just connect with a person. You may just connect with a person that you need to meet. That if you stay in your shell, you won't meet. You have to put it out there to make connections. You have to get in the stream to go down the river. You can't do it from the shore. 
So this might be the most important one for you that I talked about today. So we have a few minutes. Any questions, guys? Ladies? Any questions? I guarantee you I don't know everything. I'm just sharing what I've learned in my decades of being in here. I think that it's all pretty significant stuff. Any questions? Well, right now well, it's I, a I, I'm a big I'm a big proponent. I use RSI a lot for you know if you've seen any of my work. I talk about divergences, confirmed highs, and three drives. But I've interviewed Jack Schwager. Do you know who he is? He wrote the book Market Wizards. You know who he is? Yeah, when I was on FX Street, I interviewed Jack. It's probably out there on the internet. Um, I asked him what's his most important advice to a trader, and he said, find a trading style that suits your personality. So what I think are the best technical indicators may be okay for me, but may not be okay for you. Some people trade naked. They use no indicators. Maybe they're e-waivers or something like that. But I, I'm, so, I'm hooked on the RSI. I've renamed it the Real Simple Implicator. And I've done videos in here to demonstrate that work. Anything else? I hope that helps. But find a trading style that suits your personality. You found that you, you know, you're a scalper. You know what suits your personality. That's very important to finally come to realize that. Okay, Camillo, I, th I think that's it. I don't think there yeah. are any more questions. I think that's, uh, that's all for today. It was a great webinar, like really packed with nuggets of wisdom. Um, thanks a lot for sharing your experience. I'm sure it's really valuable for everyone here, and it and it is to me too. So it it was a really great. Uh, and remember, Camillo, not just to hear these things, but to write them down, and put it put them yeah. around your workstation. These sayings, so that you see them and notice them, because you'll forget them if you don't write them down. And a lot of these are very important for you to realize, especially, you know, don't take any trades that you didn't plan for. Okay, I think yeah, the, one of the biggest failing. And... Yeah, impulse trading is what buries a lot of people. They come in, they look at their screen, and they go, huh, that looks interesting, and they put no thought into it. It's an impulse. So I hope this has added value to what you're trying to accomplish here at Forex Boat. And uh, everyone have a great weekend. And uh, you can see my videos on Monday and Wednesday. Thanks a lot, Dale. Uh, everyone, this video will be available soon. You can check it out in your mail. And you can check it out within the Facebook group. Um, you should watch it again. Uh, like Dale was saying, repetition is key. So we're going to wrap it out now. Um, I'm going to launch a, a poll for you guys to rate the webinar. And hope to see you next time. Bye, Dale. Okay. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Remember, don't just count your pips. Count your blessings. And I think finding a great community like Forex Boat for your journey is a great step that you all took. Okay, Camillo. Talk to you later. Thanks a lot, man. Bye. All right, buddy.